Hey guys, this is Kenji back again to bring you another video. Um, this time we are doing um a little cool little challenge. Not really a challenge, but a cool little series made up by um two YouTubers by the names of Horrific Nightmares JM, aka Jason, and the Horror Man. Joe, and his real name's Joe, but his channel's just The Horror Man. Two really cool, cool channels, and what they've been doing is, every twice a month, they will have, um, they will make up a 2020 list, and you do one in the beginning of the month, and you do one in the end of the month, and it will be just of a random horror genre of films. Um, this time, it was Top 20 80 Slashers. I did not get to take place in last week, which was, um, Zombies, and that was the first one, and now it's 80 Slashers. So, I got my list here. Um, there are a couple rules. One, only one pick for, per franchise, so you can't put, like, um, you can't put Friday 13th Part 2 and Part 4, or, or you know, Child's Play 1 and 3. Also, um, no honorable mentions. This is just straight up the top 20. Also, for me, I'm only putting the original of the movie because I looked at the other list and there's plenty of opportunities to put the sequels in, so I decided to put only the original of the movie, unless if the movie came out in the 70s or the 60s or something, you know, then I'll put the sequel. Um, but the movie, if the original came out in the 80s, and I put that franchise on the list. Um, I'm only putting the original. So, um, here's my list I got right here. This is interchangeable, and again, this is my opinion. This may not be your opinion, but um, this may not gel with your list, but this is just my opinion. This is not, like, based off facts or anything. This is just based off of personal enjoyment. So number 20, we have Children of the Corn, 1984. This is a really fun Stephen King film. I know Stephen King hated it, but I, I really enjoyed his film. Um, I love Isaac's performance. It's really over the top, really fun. And Carrot Top's deformed cousin, you know, Malachi, he does okay. Um, but he's... The Malachi in the remake was better, but yeah. Um, still really awesome. You get a supernatural review at the end. Very fun film. And that was Children of the Corn, 1984, in the 20th spot. Number 19, I'm pulling out Chopping Mall, 1986. This is a really fun movie. It's pretty much robots go haywire in a mall after hours and start killing the people that work there, that are there, that's snuck in and stayed in after hours. Um, you get head explosions, which is always fun. We get, um, Dick Miller gets electrocuted. Poor Dick Miller. They're always throwing him in the, in the shit. And the, these robots are, like, very sassy. They're, they're fucking sassy. They have personality, so. Yeah. So, yes. That was my number 19, Chopping Mall, 1986. Coming in at number 18 is Prom Night, 1980. Now, I did this for Slashback Saturday last week. And, um... I knew I just had to put this movie on the list because this this movie is different from slashers I've seen before with its ending. Its ending is actually deeply sad and kind of moving if you're in the right mood. Like it's actually, I find this actually very sad. It's a very tragic kind of slasher. I know most slashers are kind of tragic, but this one just adds another empathy. Eh, Empathis on this. It was also cool seeing Jamie Lee back in our final girl spot again. Um, and Leslie Nielsen is also in this movie. I don't know why. He's just in it. But yes, at number 18, that's Prom Night 1980. Coming in at number 17 is Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, 1981. This is a really badass slasher that no one really talks about. Um... These guys put this dude in a 
the scarecrow suit because they think he attacked a child. Um, and they shoot him. They kind of get vigilante justice and they shoot him to death. Um, what happens is it turns out he didn't kill the child and now, um, his spirit went into the scarecrow and he starts taking fuckers out. The cool thing is, is I haven't seen this in a while, but I'm pretty sure we never really see the scarecrow while the murders are happening. We just kind of see the the people get murdered but we don't see who's causing it which is very cool uh one guy gets trapped in a silo and he's buried in i believe corn or some sort of wood chips or something something yellow it was cool but yeah um number 17 dark knight of the scarecrow that's 1981 um, coming in at number 16 is Silent Night, Deadly Night, 1984. The classic Christmas slasher. Be behind, um, still number one is Black Christmas, but this is really good as well. You got another Billy. Christmas slasher seem to have Billy's a lot. And he sees, um, he sees something he shouldn't have saw as a kid, and he goes crazy. Um. I love the scene where he puts the chick on the mantle with the deer head and puts impales her onto it. That's very cool. It's just a really cool, fun Christmas horror movie. Naughty. It's just very cool. And that's Silent Night, Dead in Night, 1984. And number 15 is The Prowler, 1981. Now this is just like a dude in a military outfit. Going around just killing people. And this is badass as hell. Badass as hell. In the end, the dude's head explodes. Like the, 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 the guy that's killing everyone, the prowler, his head explodes and it's, it's pretty badass. Um, so yeah. And it just has some really good kills in it. It's just really fun. So yeah, number 15. The Prowler from 1989. Coming in at number 14 is Sleepaway Camp from 1983. Um, again, this one's most well known for its ending with Bitch Has a Penis scene. Um, but I also really enjoy the kills in this. Um, the pedophile chef where he's burning from the pot of water. It's just really awesome and this is just a really good film. So yeah, and number 14 is Sleepaway Camp 1983. Uh, number 13 is Slumber Party Massacre 1981. You know, a bunch of girls at a sleepover getting killed by a guy with a drill. I just like fun, stupid movies. This is a really fun, stupid movie. Um, they eat pizza off a dead guy. I probably do that in that situation too. I can relate, you know, you're hungry and you think you're about to die. So might as well take the chance of dead man's germs over, you know, getting killed with a drill, you know. You know, if you're, if you think you're going to die, you might as well die full. Um, so yeah, I probably eat the pizza off the dead man too. Um, yeah, that's Slumber Party Massacre in 1981. Just a really fun slasher film. And that's, uh, well, number 13 came out in 1981. And number 12 is Child's Play, 1988. What can I say about this film? This film's well-paced, very well done, very good suspense. Chucky is a great villain. I love the intro to this, very, um, reminds me of gangster movies. Very, kind of noir-ish in a way. Just this whole opening scene, and it's just very awesome. I love that there's voodoo involved in this, and it's just, it's just dope. So yeah, and number 12 is Child's Play, 1988. And number 11 is Pieces, 1982. This is just a really fun movie. It's just people getting hacked up by this dude with a chainsaw. Um, it's just fucking brutal, man, and there's some really good comedy in this. I love it when he's like drowning the girl with the pool net. It's just really fun. 
Um, I was actually recommended this recently, um, this year, and I watched it and it was really good. And number 10, we have Halloween 4. And that was Pieces at number 11, 1982. Okay, so number 10 is Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, 1988. Rounding out my uh, top 10, because we are now in the top 10s, is Halloween 4. Now, I was going to put Halloween 3, but I talked to some people and I googled it, and it turns out Halloween 3 doesn't really count as a slasher, so I decided to go... Sorry about that. So I decided to go with Halloween 4. Now, Halloween 4 has a lot of great things in it. I love Rachel. She's one of my favorite final girls in the series. I actually prefer kind of over Laurie Strode. Um, yeah, I said it. Um, Jamie's awesome. Seeing Michael just go around and get that cheating douche and just killing all the people. We got the redneck army <laughs> in their trucks with their guns and they go out and they accidentally kill somebody. It's really fun. Um, Michael has some great kills in this, like when he puts the shotgun on the chicken, yeah. Number 10, Halloween Ford, Return of Michael Myers. Just a very, very 80s slasher. Came out in 1988. And that's my number 10. Coming in number 9 is Curtains, 1983. I love Curtains. Um, I like the premise of all these girls trying to get this actress role from this creepy, kind of despicable film director. <laughs> and, um... The mask in this just is awesome. The old hag lady mask and that scene on the lake. The ice skating scene is just iconic for a reason. It's iconic to people that know it because this is a very underrated film. But if you know the film, that's an iconic scene. At number eight, I have The Burning. Oh wait, and that was Curtains, number nine, 1983. Okay. At number 8, I have The Burning, 1981. This movie is just fucking awesome. Um, dude named Cropsy gets burned. And then he comes back and starts fucking people up with these shears. Um, I love this movie, especially the lake scene. The lake scene is fucking awesome, especially when she goes to grab or the boy's arm on the raft. Because she's in the water trying to get out. And it, the arm's like totally detached Because it was cut off. And there's blood everywhere. This is just a really good. Um, <clears throat> really fun slasher. And that's The Burning. That's my number 8. And it came out in 1981. And number 7 is A Nightmare on Elm Street. 1984. Gotta love this movie. You got Johnny Depp debuting in it. You got the first sign of Robert England's. Great performance is Freddy Krueger. He's got a little bit of sick comedy in this, but there's not too much comedy yet, and it's still really dark. There's some fun kills in this, like when he turns Johnny Depp into a human smoothie in his bed, and when he kills the chick. So yeah, gotta love a Nightmare on Elm Street, and that's my number seven. Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. Can't go wrong with the Kruger. Can't go wrong with the Kruger. Um, number six is Predator, 1987. You can say this isn't a slasher. I believe it is. Um, pretty much what you have here is a bunch of commandos, pretty much the John Wicks, the Rambos, the commandos of the universe. Really badass guys um, getting picked off one by one by the Predator and really being shown that they're useless against him. Um, this is an unstoppable force hunting down a bunch of people in the location, killing them off by one by one. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, I, I think the Predator is a slasher. And if you want to argue, the Horror Man Joe put the Terminator on his list so I can put Predator. 
So yeah, um, I got your back, Joe. <laughs> I got your back on that. Please have my back on this. <laughs> so yes, number six, Predator, 1987. Um, number five is Maniac, 1980. Maniac's another awesome one. It's, um, you get to see Tom Savini's head explode in it. That's something. Also, um, this is very much a character study along the lines of like First Blood, where that was a, a really good action movie, but also a character study of John Rambo. Um, Maniac is a really good slasher, and also a character study of the of the main character, the the villain, the slasher, the maniac. So yeah, that's number five, Maniac, nineteen eighty. Um, number four is Pumpkinhead from 1988. I love Pumpkinhead. It's a creature feature. It's a cool monster movie. And it's also a really good slasher with some fun kills, including a shotgun impalement. Um, I really love Pumpkinhead. I really love the practical effects on it. I really love the theme of revenge not being the answer. And it's just really cool. And Lance Henrik Henriksen really brings his all in this. So yeah, that's number four, Pumpkinhead, 1988. Number three is Slaughter High, 1986. I know a lot of people wouldn't put Slaughter High this high, but I love this movie. This, this is one of the first um, real slashers I ever saw. Um, I think my first might have been Freddy vs. Jason, but this was definitely in the first handful. It was like this in Friday the 13th Part 2 and Freddy vs. Jason. Um, I saw this and I, I fell in love with it. It's, it's fucking hilarious. It's, it's funny. This dude like puts acid in a beer can and encloses it without making it look tampered. So it looks like a brand new beer can and the dude opens it and drinks it and dies. And then you got him putting acid in the water pipes. So when the girl goes to use the bathtub in the school, acid comes out. It's just fucking great, and the killer has a good reason for killing, because he was tortured pretty bad by these horrible kids who are now getting their comeuppance in the school years later. Um, so yeah, I have a special um, attachment to Slaughter High, because of when I saw it, and it being one of my first horror movies, and me loving goofy stuff, so yeah, that's why Slaughter High is so high. And that's my number three, Slaughter High 1986. My introduction to Slashers, pretty much, besides Freddy vs. Jason and Friday the 13th Part 2. Um, my number two is Puppet Master 1989. I love the Puppet Master franchise. It's one of my favorite franchises out there. I do not like all the movies in it, but most of them are really, really good. Um... I love the different puppets, Blade, Jester, Leech Woman, Pinhead, um, Tunneler, he was in the first one, they added more on, um, and I love the, I love the look of the hotel, and I love the, even though the puppets don't show up, I do love the story of this, about how these, like, different psychics, well, these different powers are, are all going to check on their old friend who summoned their dare, summoned them there, who is now dead, um, and they're, like, trying to check out if he's really dead, and then the puppets start killing people, and you don't know who the puppets are working for, and it's just really cool. I love Puppet Master, and that's my number two, Puppet Master 1989. And at number one, it's gotta be Friday the 13th, 1980. Now, there are more others in the franchise I like better. Pretty much with all of these, there are others in the franchise that I do prefer. But I said I was going to stick with the originals, and that's what I'm doing. So, my number one is Friday the 13th, and this is a really awesome movie. You got a really cool twist with who the killer is. Um, the cinematography on this is on point. I love the cinematography of this movie. It's got really really well done cinematography and um um I like how we also don't really 
get any idea of who the killer is throughout for the beginning of the movie there's no hints like it could be this person no they just keep saying there's a blood curse the closest we get to a suspect is crazy ralph but then that is also debunked by a scene where our, one of our victims annie gets in a car and starts talking to that person talking to the killer one we know it can't be crazy ralph from that because he one crazy ralph gets around by bike and two and he had an encounter with Crazy Ralph before this earlier in the film. And it was a negative encounter. So we know he wouldn't be she wouldn't be talking to him friendly like this. So it couldn't have been Crazy Ralph. So I love how they just keep it up in the air if you're watching it for the first time and you haven't heard the spoilers of it because everybody knows the twist of this film, but still if you haven't, I would say just try to go in as blind as possible because you'll have a fun ride. You'll have a great fun ride because there's no mention of Jason at all to the end. And Pamela's not even in the movie to the very end where we find out she's the killer. Um, so yeah, very awesome. So that's my top 20 list for top 20 e slashers for the 20 for 2020 series. Um, thank you, Jason and Joe, for making this. It's really awesome. Um, I had fun putting together this list. I will try to participate in next week's. Um, this is going to be up late. I don't even know if this is going to be up the same day that you put this up, that everybody else is putting theirs up, but you know what? It is what it is. Um, hope you enjoy my list. Um, and yeah. This is Trenchy signing out. I'll leave links for two dudes I just mentioned below. Hope you guys have a nice day. Stay frosty. This is Trenchy signing off. Beep up boop. <laughs>